In another hangar at Palmdale, the second airplane is in the final phase of manufacturing operations. Folding the tips to increase high-speed stability once was looked on as an unusual solution. Now it's proven. So through experience, an unusual design feature becomes accepted, practical. The pace of final operations was steadily moving towards completion of the airframe. Rollout was only a few days in the future as the landing gear swung back and into the wells. This operation had been flight proven and the fitting and adjusting filled the last few hours of manufacturing. As the gear was swinging, speeches were already being written. He didn't mention, though, that it also has been the heaviest airplane in the world to ever take to the air. It has also been the heaviest airplane that has ever landed on one occasion. It is today the fastest big airplane that's flying in the world today. But in less than two decades, aviation has progressed forward now to the point where an airplane like the B-70 is flying now at almost Mach 3. As the sister ship to the number one that is flying at Edwards rolls out this morning to take its place along beside number one, I want to congratulate all of you people, North American, the various subcontractors, those who've had a hand in making this, this day possible. You have every right to be proud. Rollout day was also family day, and a crowd of 6,500 turned out for the unveiling. With the ceremony over, everyone moved in for close inspection. The plane they saw was not outwardly different, but there have been many subtle changes. Starting at the nose, there is extra instrumentation for gust research. The cockpit has only minor changes, but there's more fuel in the fuselage, approximately 5,000 gallons. This will mean more range, more endurance. The inlets will be fully automatic in their operation. The co-pilot need only monitor their performance. The major difference is in the wing. It has a five degree dihedral. The top of the wing shows even more instrumentation. Pressure probes to sample the air along the wing surface. Over 200 additional channels of instrumentation are available on this second plane. Even the pilot staff was taking another look. Colonel Fulton made three trips as co-pilot. He was aboard on the 6th, 7th, and 12th flights. Colonel Joe Cotton, the Air Force project pilot, has put in over six hours of flight time. Van Shepard, a North American pilot, tells how the brakes worked on his two flights in the XP-70. Al White, chief test pilot, has flown the left seat in all missions. These are the men who have proven the B-70 design in many flight situations. They'll soon have two planes ready for flight. May 29th ended the manufacturing era, and this second plane of the series is the last to be produced. It was completed in just 19 months, less than half the time it took to build the first model. The experience and know-how gained provide substantial contribution to the technology of supersonic airframe manufacture. Start engine number two, stand by to start engine number two. Roger, number two. Roger, engine number two, stand by to start engine number two. As the checkout of the XP-70 is performed, other aerial support aircraft prepare for the flight. For short-range rescue support, the Air Force provides a helicopter to cover the XB-70's takeoffs and landings. Uh, mobile com, uh, data control, uh, the hydraulics is connected yet. Dang it, uh, utility is disconnected, uh, primary not yet. Got it. Momentarily. Supplementing the normal helicopter personnel, the crew includes a photographer to document the event a seat capsule expert, and a flight surgeon, all fully equipped to perform emergency service. We have all uh, GSE removed at this point, and the airplane is just about ready for taxi. All right, dear, thank you. 
Immediately prior to flight, experienced observers board an F-104 and prepare to accompany the flight for as long as they are able to keep up with the XB-70. Their objective is to offer assurance to the pilots that the mechanical operations of the plane have functioned properly. Such operations as the landing gear retracting and the wingtips lower. From a T-38, a motion picture cameraman provides air-to-air -air photographic coverage. This film coverage is a normal Air Force requirement for all flights of experimental aircraft. During flight, this control room is the nerve center of the whole operation. Magnetic tapes of all conversations, commands, and responses are recorded for future studies. This is XB-70 ship number two. In July, the second ship flew for the first time and has now, in 16 flights, progressed to speeds in excess of Mach 2.9. Engineers familiar with each of the major subsystems watch the development of the flight plan. Constant surveillance is maintained on the air inlet control system, the propulsion units, the chase planes, and the range control. The chase planes act as pacers and offer a calibrated miles per hour speed count. This is a double check on the XP-70's instrumentation. The steady flow of data is telemetered from various sensor points throughout the plane and registered on dynagraph recorders. 